Ladies and gentlemen, in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at some of the biggest blowouts in recent March Madness history. And in doing research for this video, I did use T-Rank. It is, I always say this, it's crazy how there are so many better college basketball analytical websites than there are college football. Like with college football, it's as bland as you can get. There's no game by game. But with college basketball, you can see your team's game score on every single game, offensive efficiency, defensive efficiency, turnover rate. It really is remarkable, and that's how I was able to find all of these blowouts, beginning with an Elite Eight blowout. UConn, the number four seed, this happening last year over Gonzaga, 82-54. to A lot of people thought, I mean, Gonzaga was the higher seed in this game. They were a three seed. UConn was a four seed. UConn just completely annihilates them, really, in the second half. This was a closer game towards the end of the first half. The next one, this is your standard 1v16 bludgeoning Baylor when they were a one seed, 85 to 49 over Norfolk State. Just a complete annihilation. Baylor basketball has been so impressive. They stuck with Scott Drew, and he rewarded them with a national title, and this was one of their ultra-loaded teams. How about this? A 5 over 12 massacre. St. Mary's over Indiana. Trace Jackson Davis, the four-year player. They got crushed, and this was kind of a situation where Indiana barely makes it with a bad record and then just gets destroyed in the first round by a very solid St. Mary's team. St. Mary's they might be trending towards a five seed again this year. We will see. Logan Johnson, there's a name. I remember him for St. Mary's. Uh, next, you do have FSU destroying John Morant and Murray State. This was that Murray State team. They were a 12 seed. They beat the five seed. Everyone was really high on them going into this game against FSU. They've got a top three overall pick likely in John Morant. And they get crushed. FSU scores 50 points in the first half. FSU had a good run there. The pandemic ruined FSU basketball. Remember when FSU put up a banner, they were like going to be a two seed? It was like projected two seed in March Madness and then the tournament got canceled and then they put up a banner saying projected two seed. But listen, FSU went through a run where they were actually really good at basketball. We all know they're a football school, but they won this game by basically 30 points over Murray State. Next, how about this? Buffalo the Max School, they were a six seed, 31 and three coming into this game. They crushed the 11 seed Arizona State, 91 to 74. Just a very rare thing to have a Mac team as a six seed. Normally, we're, we're expecting a Mac team to be like on the 14 line. So I just thought that was an interesting one, and they ended up crushing Arizona State and really leading that game by like 10 points throughout the entirety of it. Clemson destroying Auburn back in 2017. This was just a trouncing. Clemson was up 43 to 19 in the first half. And Clemson, it looks like they might be, you know, around a five seed, maybe a six seed this year. That was an annihilation, though, back in 2017. This is another typical one over 16. UC Davis makes it against Kansas, and Kansas just thrashes them. Drops in a hundred burger, a hundred to 62. They win by 38 points in that one. The final four massacre: Villanova annihilating Oklahoma, 95 to 51. This score wasn't as bad as... This... God, I hate that scoreboard. It's such a bad scoreboard, man. I'm glad they switched, but... This score is actually not entirely representative of how, of how this game went. It was kind of close early in the second half. Like, it was a 15-16 point game. It wasn't like it was a 30 point game at the end of the first half. So, I mean, they Villanova just poured it on late in the second half. They went on like a 24 to nothing run... 95 to 50 won the final score of a final four game. Villanova was just so deep that year. Josh Hart went 10 of 12 from the field. The next one, this was the undefeated Kentucky team at this point, 37 and 0. This was a Sweet 16 game. I remember at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse or the Q, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, Kentucky was in that region. And they won this game 78 to 39. Kentucky was just ridiculous. I mean, they had a absurdly long defense with Collie Stein and Carl Anthony Towns. 
and they I mean they just annihilate West Virginia in a this was them going to the Elite Eight they won this game not even allowing 40 points and then they almost lost to Notre Dame in the Elite Eight and then of course they did end up losing to then the another number one seed the Frank Kaminsky led Wisconsin Badgers Kentucky though just completely loaded that year. Uh, Baylor destroying Creighton back in like 2014, 85 to 55 when Baylor was a six seed against a three seed. So this would have been a second round matchup. Isaiah Austin, very, very sad story. He was actually a top five overall recruit, the center for Baylor. He had 17 points that game. Doug McDermott, 15 points, but Creighton gets annihilated. The Missouri Valley Conference, I remember that, yep. Next, it is Florida crushing Virginia. Next, it is Florida crushing Virginia in a boar fest 2017 game, 65 to 39. This is a 4v5 matchup. Virginia's high score had nine points. I mean, that's typical Virginia basketball. Just a really boring game there. Florida allows under 40 points. They don't even break 70. And then this one, Duke destroying Oral Roberts. The final score does not do this justice. This game was over within the first seven minutes. Duke went up 15 to nothing, and I don't think the score ever got within 12 points after they went up 15 to nothing, and there were a lot of people picking Oral Roberts to upset Duke. You know, this was a Duke team that was a five seed. People were kind of down on them last year. You had Oral Roberts. They had the upset a few years ago against Ohio State in the 15v2 game. People were kind of feeling Oral Roberts, and it was just a complete annihilation. I will say, I went to look, like, watch this game and watch some of the highlights. It's sad how in a lot of these first round games, there's just nobody there. Like the atmosphere is so bad. That's something that's sad, but it tends to happen a lot, unfortunately. The next one going all the way back to 2011, Ohio State trouncing George Mason. When George Mason was actually pretty good, an eight seed. This was a second round matchup. This was the Ohio State death squad when they were just loaded. 34-2 and two at this point. David Lighty, 7-of-7 seven seven from 3, and they scored 52 points in the first half as a 1 seed. Also that same year, 8-v-9 game, Michigan. It wasn't like Michigan was very good that year. They were just 21-13, and 13, but they destroyed Tennessee. That must have been a really weak year for the bubble. Tennessee was barely above 500, but they were a 9 seed. Tobias Harris was on Tennessee that year, and Michigan won that game, not even allowing 50 points. And then this final one, Gonzaga over Utah. Back in 2016, the Kyle Kuzma three-seed Utah team. We'll see if they can make the tournament again this year, but that was their most loaded roster, and they got destroyed by Gonzaga when Gonzaga was an 11 seed. So those are kind of weird dynamics, Gonzaga being seeded very low, Utah being a three-seed. Kyle Kuzma did go 5 of 8. He just didn't shoot very much. It was a blowout from pretty much the beginning. Gonzaga was up by 15 at the end of the first half. But either way, guys, those are just some fun little blowouts. Looking back on recent memory here for March Madness. That's going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.